Gemini 3.0 versus GPT-5, who wins? Google just dropped Gemini 3, and it scored 45.1% on ARCA GI2. That's a test. Most AI models fail completely. OpenAI fired back with GPT 5.1 that's twice as fast on real-world tasks. But here's what nobody's saying. There's no single winner here. Each model crushes different work. I tested both. I checked the real benchmarks, and I'm going to show you exactly which one you need. Let me give you the timeline first, because this all happened fast. OpenAI announced GPT-5. They called it their flagship model for deep textual reasoning. Big launch. Everyone was excited. They dropped GPT-5.1, faster response times, better customization, real upgrades. Google released Gemini 3, and they came out swinging. They called it their most intelligent model ever state-of-the-art reasoning capabilities, and the benchmarks backed it up. Now, this wasn't just marketing talk. The numbers were real. Hey, if we haven't met already, I'm the digital avatar of Julian Goldie, CEO of SEO agency Goldie Agency. Whilst he's helping clients get more leads and customers, I'm here to help you get the latest AI updates. So now we've got two powerhouse models, both launched within weeks of each other, both claiming to be the best. And you're sitting there wondering which one to actually use. That's what we're figuring out today. Let's start with how these things are built because the architecture tells you everything about what they're good at. Gemini 3 uses something called unified multimodal architecture. That's a fancy way of saying it. Processes text, images, video, and code all through one shared reasoning core. Everything flows through the same brain, no switching between systems. When you give Gemini 3 a prompt with text and an image, it doesn't treat them separately. It understands them together as one connected piece of information. That's powerful because most models have to process text first, then images, then try to connect them. Gemini 3 does it all at once. GPT-5 took a completely different approach. OpenAI focused hard on deep text reasoning. They wanted the absolute best narrative coherence for long form writing. They wanted perfect logical flow. So they built for that first, then they added multimodal capabilities on top using multiple tools. And here's what that means in practice. When GPT-5.1 handles a task with mixed media, it's calling different systems. One for text, one for images, then it combines them. It works, but it's not native. It's not built into the core the way Gemini 3 is. The impact shows up in speed. Gemini 3 delivers complete multimodal outputs 40% faster than GPT 5.1. That's not a small difference. If you're doing creative work with text and images, 40% faster adds up quick. You're getting more done, less waiting around, time for the AI profit boardroom. If you want to actually scale your business with AI, you need to be in the right community, is where business owners are using AI automation to get more customers and save hundreds of hours. We share real implementations, real case studies, real results, not just theory. Check it out, link in the description. Now let's talk about the benchmarks because this is where things get interesting. Gemini 3 has a mode called Deep Think and it crushed some of the hardest tests ever made. On Humanity's last exam, it scored 41%. Let me explain what that means. This test is designed to be extremely difficult. Most AI models score under 10%. Gemini 3 got 41%. That's a massive jump. But here's the thing about GPT 5.1. OpenAI didn't publish benchmark scores on these specific tests. They focused on speed improvements instead. And those speed improvements are real. So we've got Gemini 3 winning on reasoning benchmarks and GPT 5.1 winning on speed for text tasks, different strengths. And that's the whole point. There's no single winner. It depends what you're actually doing. Let's get into real world performance because benchmarks only tell you so much. What matters is how these models perform when you're actually building something, when you're writing code, when you're solving real problems, Gemini 3 has been integrated into a bunch of coding tools, GitHub Copilot, Cursor JetBrains, Replit, and third-party testing shows 35% higher accuracy in software engineering challenges compared to Gemini 2.5 Pro. That's a big improvement. Code resolution is better. Fewer bugs, better suggestions. I tested Gemini 3 on building a data validation script. It handled edge cases well. It caught potential errors before they happened. The code was clean and well-structured. Comments were helpful. Everything worked on the first try. GPT 5.1 came out with developer-specific variants. They have something called 5.1 Codex that's built specifically for coding, and it got immediate API access. So if you're building production systems, you could integrate it right away. No waiting, no approval process. I tested GPT 5.1 on the same data validation script different approach. The code was more compact, a few lines, more clever solutions, but it required me to understand the logic better. Gemini 3's code was more readable. 
GPT 5.1's code was more efficient. Trade-offs for debugging, both models are strong. I gave them a broken API integration with authentication issues. Gemini 3 found the problem in the token refresh logic. Clear explanation, step-by-step -step fix. GPT 5.1 found the same issue, but also suggested architectural improvements. It went deeper into why the problem existed in the first place. Now, here's something critical, access, because it doesn't matter how good a model is if you can't use it. Gemini 3 Pro is available right now in multiple places. You can use it in Gemini CLI if you have an AI Ultra subscription. You can use it in Firebase AI Logic if you're on the Blaze plan. It's in Vertex AI, it's in Gemini Enterprise. But Gemini 3 Deep Think, which is the version with those insane benchmark scores, requires AI Ultra subscription. If you have AI Pro or other tiers, you're on a wait list. So the best version isn't available to everyone yet. GPT 5.1 is rolling out to paid users first. If you have ChatGPT plus Pro Go or Business, you're getting it. Then free users get access after. Enterprise and education customers get a seven day early access toggle. They can turn it on before everyone else. So both models have some kind of tiered access. Neither one is just freely available to everyone in its best form. That's important to know. Back to the comparison. Let's talk about pricing because this affects your decision if you're running real workloads. Gemini 3 Pro costs $2 input and $12 output per million tokens if you're using up to 200K context. If you go over 200K context, it's $4 input and $18 output per million tokens. GPT 5.1 costs $1.25 input and $10 output per million tokens. That's for standard context. So GPT 5.1 is cheaper on the API side, not by a huge amount, but if you're processing millions of tokens, it adds up for consumer access. Both Gemini Advanced and ChatGPT Plus are priced around $20 a month. That gets you access to the best models, higher usage limits, premium features, pretty similar offerings. But here's what matters more than price, which model actually fits your workflow. Because paying less for a model that's slower at your specific tasks costs you more in the long run, your time has value. If a model saves you 10 hours a month, paying an extra $5 is nothing. Let me break down when to use each one. Choose Gemini 3 for multimodal integration. If you're working with text and images together, Gemini 3 is faster and more coherent. The outputs make more sense. Everything connects better. I use it for creating content that mixes writing and visuals. Choose Gemini 3 for structured output workflows. If you need consistent formatting, precise structure, technical documentation, Gemini 3 delivers. It follows instructions exactly. No random variations, no weird formatting breaks. Choose Gemini 3 for tasks requiring synchronized text image processing, social media content, marketing materials, presentations, anything where the visual and the text need to work as one unit. Choose GPT 5.1 for pure text analysis. If you're analyzing documents, writing long form content, doing deep research with just text, GPT 5.1 is excellent. The narrative coherence is better. The logical flow is stronger. Choose GPT 5.1 for scenarios requiring faster RAG pipeline execution. If you're building systems that retrieve information and generate responses, GPT 5.1's speed improvements matter. Going from 82 seconds to 39 seconds changes what's possible. Choose GPT 5.1 for developer environments needing immediate API stability. If you're shipping production code and you need reliable API access right now, GPT 5.1 is available and stable. The bottom line is this selection depends on your primary workflow. If you're doing multimodal creative tasks, Gemini 3 is your answer. If you're doing text heavy analytical work, GPT 5.1 speed improvements benefit you more. I use both, that's the honest truth. I use Gemini 3 when I'm building content systems, when I'm automating social media, when I'm working with mixed media. I use GPT 5.1 when I'm analyzing data, when I'm writing strategy documents, when I'm planning out complex systems. And here's what most people get wrong. They think they need to pick one and stick with it forever. That's not how this works. You use the right tool for the job. Sometimes that's Gemini 3. Sometimes that's GPT 5.1. Sometimes you use both in the same project. Let me give you a real example. I'm building an SEO content system. I use GPT 5.1 to analyze competitor content and generate article outlines. Fast, deep, good reasoning. Then I use Gemini 3 to create the social media posts, promoting that content with custom graphics, faster multimodal output, better visual text integration, both models in one workflow, each doing what it's best at. That's how you actually win with AI. The AI profit boardroom is where people are actually implementing this stuff. We're not just talking about AI. We're using it to grow businesses, to automate workflows, to get more customers. Link in the description. This is where real entrepreneurs are building with AI.